The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Tuesday morning and talk about an overnight session, folks. We have some tensions possibly easing between Russia and the Ukraine. The market taking that and running with it. We got a five minute chart here in the S&Ps. You take a look at about 3 AM Eastern time. You're trading at 43.90. You trade up almost 80, 80 S&P points. We reach a high at about 7, 10 AM this morning of 44.68. Just like that, though, we We've given up 20 S&P points on that level. The NASDAQ 100, we were up, I think, 2.2, 2.3% uh, pre-market at the highs. You're still up 1.6% right now in the NASDAQ 100, 14,479. Dow's up 331 points. You're just shy of 1% right now. The Russell up 1.3% right now. Russell's given up 15 points from the high. The Russell, you talk about an acceleration, man. From 2013 up to 2060, you're talking about, what is that, 47 points in an index where 20 points is representing about 1%. Uh, crude oil pulling back right now. Check out crude, three in the morning, we're up at about 95 bucks. You trade below 92, a short-term rise to 93.24. We're trading at 92.28. You jump over to gold, gold quite the rise in the overnight session, extending what we had on Friday into Monday, and gold gives it all back and then some. From 1880 down to 1845, gold's down $14 on the session right now. But man, you're talking about gold off 25 bucks off the high, and you were about 35 bucks off the high just in the last hour or so in that gold contract. And we jumped in notes and bonds right now. We got the 10 year, 125.25. You're down about six ticks right now. The 30 year down 23 ticks at 151. So we have the Russia story going on. We'll get into that in a moment. What we also have. Uh, producer prices. And where do they come in? They come in hot, folks. Uh, now, this data point, not as important as the CPI, but it's still an important data point. We're going to talk to our man Kevin Hinks coming up after the break at 9.15 this morning. Uh, next segment, we'll get his take on this. Uh, he always does a great breakdown where he gives you his take on the numbers he's looking at and the importance of each number on a monthly basis. Uh, PPI somewhere in there, but not quite up to the CPI data. Uh, but you're talking about 9.7%, folks, 9.7%. The market was looking for 9.1%, and you rise 9.7% from a year earlier, and that is the business cost gauge. Producer, price, index, inflation stays hot above of what they were looking for. Now, they were looking for 9.1% year over year and a 0.5% monthly advance. Folks, you got a 1% monthly rise, the fastest since May. <clears throat> That's not the data you want. If you're going to try and talk about waning inflation, there's your PPI in black, year over year. In yellow, monthly we're talking about, that is not a subsiding PPI in any way, folks. That is quite a monthly reading. Uh, last month we had 0.4%. We come in at a solid 1%, almost 10% on a yearly basis. The figures, which reflected broad increases across categories, further reinforce the Fed's intentions to begin raising rates next month amid multi-inflation. Uh, I don't imagine that this is anything too surprising. The 1% on a monthly basis, man, that is quite a number. Doesn't take a genius in math to annualize that. You're talking about 12% or more. Um, and so we'll see how that breaks down in terms of we get. I've been talking about it. March 10th, folks. Put it on your calendar. March 10th. My grandfather's birthday, but it's more than that. We get the CPI data for February on March 10th. All expectations are going to point to that as we continue to see elevated levels of inflation. The cost of energy rebounded in January after falling a month earlier, rising 2.5%. So far, crude and other energy prices continue to climb on risks. Of course, we're talking about Russia and Ukraine, excluding volatile food and energy. The core PPI, 0.8% still on a monthly basis. 
0.8% on a monthly basis, 8.3% uh, from a year ago. Prices of goods accelerated in January from a month earlier, rising 1.3%, the most in three months. That's quite a number, folks. So that number comes out. Again, that just builds the expectation for the CPI data print on March 10th. <clears throat> it's already February 15th, folks. We only got 28 days in the month of February. And... You're talking about, I mean, where is it exactly? March 10th. You're talking about three weeks from Thursday. That is a fast time that we get the next CPI print, and we'll see how that shakes out. All right, let's get into some of the headlines of Russia. Uh, you almost can't keep up with the headlines that are coming. Uh, NATO awaits evidence of pullback. Russia, uh, now, German chancellor is meeting with Putin. U.S. warnings of possible attack on Ukraine, most urgent level yet. Markets were a little freaked out in the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, and then you have the president of the Ukraine making a sarcastic comment about the rest of the world predicting a date for the attack by Russia. Uh, markets reacted to that almost quickly, thinking he might not have been sarcastic. Bottom line is, war has not happened yet. That is a good thing. Looks like it hopefully will not happen today. A lot of posturing, a lot of game theory going on between uh, some uh, a bad dude named Putin out there. And uh, they're talking about pairing some troops after drills, but maybe saying they haven't seen anything yet. Nonetheless, it seems like tensions easing a bit uh, and the market really taking and running with them, man. Uh, remarkable that on the day that we may get some action in terms of, I believe Chairman Powell in front of the Senate Banking Committee, is it, talking about for his confirmation, but that's not even the talk. The talk is about the Ukraine. And does a company, do some of our growth companies really, you know, live or die on, on that? You know, the humanity level of going on, um, the democratic norms of, of Putin invading another country uh but in terms of the reaction on these growth stocks man it's pretty remarkable all right let's jump over to the s p i was looking at so check out i'm going to put this thing on a it's 20 day get us back well here's a 20 day okay this is an hourly chart we're looking at now what to look at here is from the lows that we had from basically the pullback lows we're talking about, from January 23rd to January 28th, you chopped around. You had about 150-point S&P range from maybe 44.40, maybe the lower end, 42.67. You see the range we're talking about right here on that consolidation. You pop from that area on January 28th. You trade from a price point of 42.66, up almost 350 points, about to 45.80. Even more than that, right? What is that? No, yeah, about 320 points. Uh, what I wanted to pull out here is that the area that we are bouncing from is the 618 retracement, which is pretty cool. You trade up from that level. You reach a high of about 45.80. You pull back and chop around right near the 618 for the last couple of days, and that is right where you pop from, that 618. Now, that is, okay, I'm going to put this on now a four-hour chart to zoom in to see the exact pullback. We're talking about market highs coming into the new year, January 4th of 4808. You pull all the way back down to 4200 almost. That was on January 24th. We reached 4212. You look where we are, like I just talked about on January 28th, the market rebounds, it bounces. We pull back to a 618, always a nice area if you're looking for a bounce to maybe play out, right? We get a pullback to a 618. And yeah, if you get another leg in this, you're talking about a leg from 42.65 up to 45.80. Yeah, so more than 300 points. We'll talk about the ABCD. We'll talk to Kevin Hicks when we get right back, folks. Stay Everything tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can try Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up 49 points. You got the NASDAQ 100 futures up 220. That's more than 1.5% right now. All the markets, <clears throat> excuse me, giving back some of the gains they've had over the last couple hours. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network, live here on Tiger TV, Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They break down the day's market action, folks. They walk you through hypothetical trades. They're talking options. They're talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Where do we start, man? Well, I think the first um, big news story is the lessening of geopolitical risk that's going on in the market. A, a slight lessening, Tommy. I don't think it's one to be uh, overdone. Um, there's still 100,000 troops on the Ukraine border. So quite Quite the reaction, Kevin, right, for, for uh, a market that, man, 2%, just like that, on uh, which, you know, it's better than no yeah. news, as in maybe some, some de-escalation. I'm jumping in, but I agree. Go ahead, man, because that's quite a move in these markets on potentially, but we'll see where the troops go, right? Go ahead, man. Exactly. I mean, what you don't want to fall for, Tommy. Now, you grew up in Boston. You live in Florida, but it's the old snowball trick, right? When the yes. You don't want to fall for the snowball up in the air. You want to look at the one coming at your nose. And so Vladimir Putin's a KGB agent. Deception is part of his, you know, daily practice. So I would still be <laughs> very um, aware of what he's doing. And there's still, like I said, 100,000 troops. But there, there is appears to be on the surface a bit of de-escalation here. So that's a very good thing. Um, so we'll take that as it is, and we'll trade it and understand it. So uh, you know the the economic data uh, today, interesting, right? The month over month numbers were very high, but Tommy, the year over year numbers came in flat to a month ago. I thought that was something that to pay attention to, and if you're hoping for a plateau of inflation, maybe you're getting it right up at this level. I mean, there's still big bits of inflation in the pipeline, Tommy, but at least you could cling on to the fact that the year-over-year -year numbers didn't escalate any higher from where they were. 
And Kevin, for those the new listeners out there, you've talked about it a couple times. When you talk about some of the economic numbers throughout the month, uh, and, and this is your, your own bias, you know, but the ones you look to, the ones that you talk about that are most important, I know, is it CPI that, that maybe, or the jobs number, but you know, PPI not as important. Could you give us that breakdown again real quick for the new listeners of what you look for and where you rank some of the more economic important numbers like PPI, for instance? Right. Well, d- Let's focus on the PPI number and inflation, because there's four really good looks in a month at inflation, Tommy, and that is the wages part of non-farm payrolls, then CPI, then PPI, and then uh, when we look at income, personal income and outlays, there's a PCE, a consumption uh, data that comes within the personal income and outlays. That's the four big looks at inflation. Now, here's the thing. PPI, as in terms of inflation, compared to the other three, is a distant fourth, right? The, 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 you want to look at wages in non-farm payrolls. You want to look at CPI at, at the consumer level. And you want to look at uh, personal income and outlays in the PCE data. Because sometimes that PPI data doesn't show up. It doesn't... Uh, manifest itself into the other data it often does and it often does at a percentage but those top three are really important ppi is another look at inflation but it's a distant fourth that's why you may not see the market move as much from ppi as it does from the other three i mean it's a great explanation man i learned a lot from listening to you go through those types of explanations so i appreciate you going over it and uh for for all those that are unaware of the snowball trick man it only takes once where they lob that snowball up and you get nailed in the yeah. face and then you never forget that one again man um, exactly we go from that we got some companies out with earnings today kevin uh what are you guys going to be checking out at fast market coming up at 12 noon eastern time today you know, it's funny. If you listen to the show often, you know that Andy Swan is a big fan and proponent of Crocs. So they're going to do their presentation on Crocs today. They come out with earnings before the open tomorrow morning. And then, I mean, we can look at Roblox. We can look at Shopify, yeah. two really good names coming out with earnings. We did Airbnb yesterday. That's yeah. coming out with earnings today after the bell. So Roblox and Shopify today, along with Crocs uh, from like Folio. Now, Kevin, if they watch the show, do they know how you may fall on the Crocs uh, trend? Yeah, I fall on the Andy Swan is a big proponent of Crocs. I fall on the never ever in my lifetime uh, <laughs> side of the Crocs discussion. You know what? I'm 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 probably there with you, man. But I got kids in the house now, and they love them, and and and, and they're perfect for kids, man. So that's I'll just keep buying them for kids because you hose them off. They're rubber. They're perfect. Uh, but yeah, I'm in, in the adult camp. But man, that chart quite a turnaround. That stock, man. I've showed many people just because uh, they have had quite a rebound, man. The stock shows it to 183, but talk about a pullback back to 97. Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, the education, as always, man, and we'll be watching at 12 noon Eastern time today. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure, man. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time today. Bunch of great companies coming out with earnings after the bell. We got geopolitical issues happening Issues happening with Russia and the Ukraine. Uh, and on top of that, you're going to have the PPI number that they'll be uh, digesting that on the open coming up at 830 as well. And you heard he did a great breakdown and that's what i wanted him uh to talk about a distant fourth the ppi number a distant fourth when they're out there all right jumping over to the nasdaq 100 right now up 243 the dow up 317 right now jumping over to other headlines we have going on in terms of the market and there is it and what kevin was talking about uh when you talk about plateauing okay when you talk about ppi year over year there it is that maybe could be the plateau. You got a 9.8% number. Again, we're looking at the yellow here for the year over year. We got 9.8%. You got 9.8% in December. We got 9.7% in January. So maybe a little bit of a plateau, especially when uh, maybe all of those prices not getting pushed forward to, subs uh, I was going to say subscribers, not to consumers uh, down the pipeline. As in some of those costs, maybe producers able to handle themselves as opposed to passing that on to the customers. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning as we get the NASDAQ 100 right now up about a percent and a half. You can have Amazon open at about $60 higher right now. There's a pop for Apple 
remarkable the moves you get when you think about the size of the company Apple is with 16 billion shares outstanding. Uh, so you're talking about a move of more than two dollars you're talking about 33 34 billion dollars in market cap added to that stock uh you jump over to google shares this morning it's going to be a big open as you'd expect when you get the nasdaq 100 right now up 1.7 percent we get the dow right now up 53 points uh, excuse me, S&P's up 53, Dow up 320. We jump over to the VIX as this market charges higher. We almost reached a high yesterday at 32, folks. We had a 25 handle on that VIX at 7.30 this morning. You jump up to about 26.57 right now on the VIX, and uh, we jump to notes and bonds right now. And you're near the lower levels on the note and bond in terms price-wise. You're down eight and a half ticks right now. You're chopping around right where we were last Thursday. We take a look at this on a daily basis. You're talking about lows. You take a look at it on a five-year weekly to get the full run. I had this 618 on that chart for a while, folks. You chopped around at the 382 for a while, broke right through that, and we are right at the 618. We'll see if we turn around or maybe just chop around there for a while. You're talking about 10-year yields right near 2%. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be come back. We'll be right back in three minutes for the market open. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We get the S&P right now. You're trading up 48 points. That's 1.1%. NASDAQ giving it up a little bit on the open. You're still up more than 1.5% right now in the NASDAQ. Dow's up 8 tenths percent right now. Bitcoin 
up $2,000, 185, dollars $2,185, I'll get it out. Uh, that's more than a 5% pop over there in Bitcoin. Crude oil, that's uh, the inverse. You're trading lower by $4.9142. For some context here, you're just back to where you were on Friday, middle of the day. Pretty sure oil was doing just fine at $9150 on Friday. Yes, it's a pullback, folks, but man, I'm not sure that that's going to be anything monumental. Uh, you talk about bonds and yields. 10-year yield right now, 2.04%. So we just blow right past 2%. The yield on the 10-year markets, holding on to the gains relatively well. I mean, we did give up. On any other world, this would be quite a pullback. You're talking about almost 30 points from where we were at 7 in the morning to where we just opened. You reach a low of 44.38. We were up there at 44.68. So basically 30 points on the dot, but you're still up 49, 1.1% right now in the S&P. Uh, some earnings already. You got Burger King parent, Restaurant Brands International. They have more than Burger King, but Burger King, the big one there. Uh, you're up 2.6%. The market's in higher territory as well, so a pretty marginal gain for their numbers. One thing I just want to touch on, though, for their numbers, um, the digital sales. Company said global digital sales climbed from $6 billion in 2020 to $10 billion last year. That is a 66% rise. And they accounted for 30% of their system-wide sales. Remarkable that you have a company like that doing 30% of their sales digitally. Popeyes reported same-store sales declined, while Burger King and Tim Hortons both reported strong same-store sales growth. Popeyes struggling. wonder if that was because they had that huge uh, chicken explosion. Tough to keep up with maybe some of the comps. Uh, but nonetheless, Restaurant Brands International, they're trading a little bit higher today. A couple other stories that popped up here as well. First of all, you got Virgin Galactic. All right, now be careful of this stock, folks. Uh, they are space. You're up 8.6% today. You want to look, you want to see what a dead cat bounce looks like? Can you see the bounce on that chart? No, you can't. Okay? Percentages when working with very small numbers can be very deceptive, folks. Yes, you're up 70 cents today. You just gave back. $50 almost on this equity, and you almost did it twice in the last 12 months. Okay, story comes out, they're taking uh, deposits for space travel. Ticket prices, I saw one saying, yeah, yeah $150,000 deposit, and prices start at 450 grand. Uh, alongside opening ticket sales to the public, they reveled a rebranding, replacing the iris of Sir Richard Branson in his logo with a purple outline of a space aircraft uh again be careful of that one folks i mean that was like you know he goes into space they get all the coverage back in june uh bezos was right there behind him as well and then the co the company just proceeds to sell off dramatically they sell shares they sell shares into the market to raise money uh and you're sitting at nine bucks and they got a long way to go and you're talking about a company because i remember talking about it back at those highs folks right now you're valued at 2.3 billion dollars the whole the whole recreational space travel industry, okay, is only going to be worth a few billion dollars. There's not a ton of people that are going to be able to pay $450,000 to travel into space. Yes, you'll have some forms of revenue, et cetera, but the whole industry of space tourism is not a big industry right now because it's too expensive. So you're valuing these companies like SpaceX that's going to fly people into space. It's not the same. Excuse me like Virgin Galactic, the point was going to be it's not the same as SpaceX, which is, I think, valued at $100 billion or something like that because they're doing deals with the Defense Department, et cetera. Uh, so be careful. I would not be buying that equity even today, even though they're taking orders. Uh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Uh, don't fool me three times, man. Not getting into this one. Uh, there's better stocks, folks, than this equity out there. All right. Speaking of better stocks, how about Buffett? Bought a billion dollars worth of Activision shares before the Microsoft deal, man. You can say what you want about Buffett. He's had quite a cash pile for a while. Hasn't really invested a lot. Uh, I mean, his his brilliance, folks, is having cash when people need it, getting deals that the general public can't, and making great investments in great companies, okay? I mean, just pay attention to what he did here. We all could have done it, okay? This stock got punished for a lot of various reasons, one of which though, as I think they go in here, yeah, that uh, after a state lawsuit alleging a sexist culture, the game publisher sent the stock price down, they were dealing with some big problems, okay? 
But guess what? Buffett thinks long term. He thinks value. OK, he looks at this equity and he says there's no reason it should be trading at these levels. He buys a billion dollars worth. And before you know it, Microsoft says the same thing and they come in and they buy it uh, for sixty eight point seven billion dollars. Uh, he owned 14.66 million shares valued at about a billion dollars at the end of 2021. Uh, yes, this is a weekly basis, so there's the end of 2021, and it didn't take long. We'll put it back on a daily basis to see the volatility. Uh, it didn't take long. January 14th, that thing escalates higher. And yeah, this still has a way to go because they are buying it at $95 a share so they still have some regulatory problems potentially there is still quite a rise there you don't see that often as in there's there's a hefty percentage priced in there that this deal does not get done 95 bucks so you got 14 bucks to the upside if the deal gets done all right and let's say you got 65 you got 16 dollars to the downside the logic being if the deal does not get done, it goes back to where you were trading prior. So your risk to the downside is about $16. This is all theoretical, folks, okay? It could be far lower or far higher. Uh, and your risk to the upside, your profit potential is 14 bucks. It's almost a 50-50 in that equity. Uh, and that has waned since this thing came out when you spiked to 87 almost on a high you're back to 81. Just keep that in mind as that goes forward. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out. These markets. They're running higher, folks. Back to the short-term basis. There's the Dow making new highs right now. We're pushing almost 35,000. We're up 462 points. You get the NASDAQ 100 catching a little bit at the open, up about 1.8%. And the s and is catching a little bit of a bit as well, up 1.4%. I imagine the VIX continuing to pair. Yes, 25.83 right now in the VIX. And we jump over to the notes and bonds. Can't help but paying attention, man. It's these yields keep rising. 2.05. We got a 2.05% yield in the 10-year. And as I mentioned, uh, interesting that we're sitting right at the 618, but you blew right through that 618. And you look where we are on this chart, seems like 117 is a pretty easy trip considering the run we had through that level. We're through the 618. The next stop is 117 to half, we'll call it. And you put this thing even longer term. I mean, you can see, you go through this level, that's your next level it's calling you at, folks. That's the next level for sure in terms of higher yields coming down to the 117 price point in the 10-year. All right, let's check out some of those FANG stocks as we got the NASDAQ 100 rocking. Amazon's up 1.6%. Big dog Apple, 1.3%. Microsoft shares up 1.9%. Google shares up one3 Let's take a look at some of the stocks that have gotten pummeled recently. Zoom up 1.8%. Roku share is up six tenths percent. I say recently, as in over the last few months, et cetera, as these growth stocks have really pulled back in dramatic fashion. We jump over to ARC, up 3.2%. You take a look at the five-year weekly uh, just to see the full COVID run. You've almost given it all back. I'm going to jump to next. Pretty interesting story talking about uh, Mr. Buffett as well. We're going to jump to this one after Buffett's story. He's basically caught up with uh, Kathy Wood. We'll show you a little chart when we get right back. Don't miss this one. Stay tuned, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. You're up 63 points. The market running even higher. NASDAQ 100 up 243. I got a chart up here. So interesting one. Let me jump to this article real quick. I saw this recently. So this is an article that's uh, going to be a little bit old here. We're talking about an article dated, come on, January 24th. All right. So we're going back three weeks. But talking about Buffett has nearly caught up with Kathy Wood after the tech stock guru vastly outperformed him in 2020. Uh, interesting. So I have a two-year chart going back here. I got the purple is ARC. OK, uh, sitting at seventy three dollars as we speak, made it up to one sixty. You have the arc axis on the left. OK, we have seventy three bucks is the current price. You got one sixty was the high. Again, arc is the purple. Berkshire Hathaway is the bar graph in here with the axes on the right. Now, Berkshire trading at four hundred and seventy six thousand uh, dollars. But this goes back two years. Now, the article, OK, if you take basically just from January of 2020 talking about the pandemic, uh, boy, Buffett way behind. Right. But just like that, he's caught up because, man, those growth companies have pulled back. It's remarkable, folks. Uh, and kudos to him for having the patience and the tenacity to make that happen. So you are right back there, and I think with what's happened since then, you'd be above. But here's here's the cool thing: is that's that chart right there is starting in January of 2020. Okay, now this star chart that I have is only going to February of 2020. Um, but you can see, folks. I mean, yeah, Berkshire came in at three hundred forty-three thousand. You're trading at four seventy-six. You had. Arc come in at about sixty dollars, and guess what? You're trading at seventy-two. You see, though, the volatility there. Arc way ahead as you came into 2021, but boy, 2021. Let's just take off this Arc one because Berkshire. Uh, how do we remove that? Yeah. Uh, just going back even a three-year weekly, man. Yeah, you trade from. 340 down to 234, you only got your money back in 2020, which was quite an underperformance considering where the market finished. But look at that value that you got in 2021 as you traded from 344 and you're still almost pushing highs in that company at 476. I don't even see a pullback on that chart. Just something to keep in mind as you go through. Uh, we all want that quick buck and we all want the ARC returns. Uh, but you can't get that return without taking some risk, folks. And when you had in 2021, Berkshire Hathaway accelerating higher, you had ARC trading from about 128 up to 159 and finishing the year at about 95. And now you're sitting at 73. Um, yeah. Now they popped up because this company, uh, now C, C Limited. Okay. Now this is an ADR, I believe. Yes. 
uh, an ADR, okay? They do business in Indonesia, Taiwan, Vietnam, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Uh, they provide users a shopping environment with integrated payment, logistics, infrastructure, and seller services. They provide various payment services and loans to individuals and businesses, and they integrate with third-party merchant partners. Now, the reason why I'm talking about them is uh, Kathy Wood is loading up on these shares. And let me make sure. Let me see. Here it is. <coughs> So this is a gaming firm, okay, as well. $16 billion in market value raised Monday. Going back to the chart, all right, now on a 15 minute basis, yeah, it's been rough recently, okay, but man, the drop from Friday and Monday, you went from 160 down to 127 yesterday alone. Now, I'm not encouraging buying this, okay? I'm just talking about the volatility. I have no idea what this company does, folks. Yes, it's attractive to try and follow with somebody that obviously has some investing acumen, to say the least, uh, but you see the loss is possible too. Now she bought, in terms of ARK Investment Management, more than 145,000 C shares on Monday. Uh, you had the next generation internet ETF buying the bulk of it. There's the pullback they've had recently on the chart. Now, this pullback recently had to do with India's move to ban 54 apps due to security concerns, including their free fire have only added to the headwinds, slowdown in gaming revenues, user growth, et cetera. Uh, the ban certainly clouds sees outlook. I would say so when you're operating a business in the country and they ban your business. I would say that's a worry for sure. Uh, but they've been accumulating these shares since the start of the year and the frequency of their purchases are only increasing this month. Do you know what that sounds like, folks? That sounds like doubling down. <laughs> on a losing investment. Now, yes, you get a pop, it pays for it, but boy, I mean, some of these companies, great companies, but you know, Zoom comes to mind, folks. Yeah, you might be nearing the level that you can get some Zoom action at 142, but you were up at 588 last year. You were up at 400 a couple, a few times. Uh, excuse me, two years ago, you were at 588. Roku comes to mind as well. I've been talking about them. You're at 158 right now. You're back to 2019 prices on Roku. Uh, strong, strong equities with dramatic pullbacks. Uh, can't overstate that in terms of where the appeal may be. Not familiar with C, but interesting that Kathy Wood uh, going after some of these stocks have really been pummeled. Now, one thing they do say in this article, which I would agree with longer term, is that she has a five-year horizon. And the companies that she's investing in, they're going to be pretty volatile, all right? The oft-repeated mantra is that ARK invests with at least a five-year time horizon and the volatility in their equity picks is expected. That part I agree with. If you're buying growth companies, folks, I mean, just look at the moves we've had in the last few weeks. Uh, you pick any, right? I mean, uh, many come to mind. Salesforce, the pullback, strong company from 311 down to 209. You're right back to where you were a year ago, basically in March of 2021, before you traded dramatically higher. Uh, many of these growth companies, Roku, Zoom, these are good companies, folks. Zoom, Zoom makes a lot of cash. Now, that's why they're valued at $42 billion, okay? But I talked about it yesterday. You start getting into companies like Roku that are only valued at $21 billion. Where is your risk here? Because you just pulled back by more than a 60 to 70 percent. Roku at this stage is valued at $20 billion. You're at least in the area that if you ever get some type of crazy pullback, you're in the area that just like Mr. Buffett coming in saying, hey, this company is valued way too low here, regardless of what's going on. Maybe they get picked up by somebody else or maybe that value just, you know, regresses back to the mean of where it should be in higher prices. Roku, $21 billion. Where do you think Roku needs to get down to where they become attractive to somebody like a Microsoft, where they become attractive to somebody like a Netflix? I don't know who would buy them, but you get the point. They are attractive. They control the set-top boxes that many people use to access streaming portals, uh, and they're valued at $21 billion. You pull back 25%, you're talking about being valued at about $15 billion, right? One of these tech companies that's worth $1.6 trillion, that's worth $2.2 trillion, that's worth $3 trillion. You get a company like Roku in the teens for billions, maybe that becomes something attractive. That's that's what I'm thinking about. Um, and what happens is you get companies that are on the verge of making money. I mean, folks, I know I'm biased. We have no Roku. I don't have Roku. I do have Roku's in my house, though, and I'm watching them at these price levels because longer term, that company valued at $20 billion with the reach that they have into households, um, I imagine there is a future for Roku. But hey, that's my bias and I could be wrong.
It's a growth company. You gotta be careful with those growth companies. If there's one thing the last couple of years have taught us, uh, make sure that you are diversified, folks, because you never know what's around the corner. I mean, did we ever think a pandemic could hit and, and markets could cascade like they have? Did you ever think they could rebound as quickly as they have? Uh, yes, it all seems pretty normal now, but rewind yourselves to March of 2020 and think about what you were thinking about in terms of the prices some of these equities were trading at. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Markets just kind of sitting where we basically started the session off. We've had a little bit of volatility in both directions, but you got the S&Ps up 1.2% right now, up 54 points. NASDAQ 100 up 228. You get the Dow up 365 right now. We jump to commodities. Crude sitting right at about 91.29. Crude's been trading a little bit lower since we've been chatting. Uh, Nine o'clock, we came on the air. You were at about 92.50, so crude giving it up. We were trading at 93.24. You just gave up two bucks in crude in the last hour and 15 minutes. But man, that's been a volatile market. Gold contract, right back to where we were trading at on Friday. And we make it up to 1881. We're right now trading at 1850. Two. Uh, my dad had a nice update out there for the gold report. I believe he's got uh, an issue coming out today as well. Great time to sign up for the gold report, folks. You can find that under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN.com. And we jump to notes and bonds right now as we got the tenure right near 2.05%, man. Quite a pullback. Uh, you almost can't overstate how quickly things have escalated from the first to the year. 
You're talking about five full points, folks, in the 10-year. Now, when I pull up this chart, okay, because we're talking about inflation, we're talking about yields, we're talking about rising rates coming at us, all right? When I pull up this chart and I say next stop could be 117, naturally, you should say, geez, that's eight points in the 10-year, right? What are we going to be yielding? We're going to be yielding some higher, higher yields, to say the least, if we drop seven points in the 10-year. Well, folks, for some context, we just dropped five points in about six weeks. Okay? We have rising rates coming at us for the next two years. Market accelerating how they're pricing that in. But that is not that big of a move when you think about how move, how quickly we just moved in six weeks. weeks, And think about how quickly the conversation has shifted. March wasn't even in play. Right? Whatever happened to winding down the asset purchases and, and launching the rate hikes in June? Not even close. Now the question is, 50 basis points, 25 basis points. Remember, March 10th, February CPI data, folks. Look for the wage data and the non-farm payroll number as well. But consumer prices, man, they are rocking it higher. Month over month, we had quite a beat on a 0.6% for consumer prices on a monthly basis. That's going to be the biggest number I'm watching next month, along with, like our man Kevin Hanks was talking about, some important numbers coming up. We got a March meeting. March 16th. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman, he's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.